This is Story Recapped. Today I'm gonna explain an adventure, mystery, and sci-fi film called Prometheus. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. A spacecraft arrives on a pristine planet with diverse terrain and bodies of water. From it, a humanoid creature walks on the planet and drinks an iridescent liquid from a cup. The creature's body starts to disintegrate and releases spores into the air. As the creature's remains fall into the water, the humanoid DNA starts to reassemble and create new life forms. Eons later in Scotland, Dr. Elizabeth Shaw excitedly shows her partner, Charlie Holloway, the drawing she found inside a cave. Shaw estimates that the drawings were created 35,000 years ago, while Holloway realizes that it's similar to other cave drawings across the earth. Shaw believes that the pictograms are invitations for humans to find the inhabitants of other planets. Years later, in a ship called Prometheus, the android, David, inspects Shaw's stasis pod and monitors her dream. Being the only one awake, David passes the time until the ship approaches its destination. David goes to the bridge to marvel at the planet. After, he checks the stasis pods and sees that Meredith Vickers already awoke without his assistance. Hours later, Vickers presents the crew a holographic video presentation where their employer, Peter Wayland, greets them, noting that he'll be long dead when they reach their destination. Wayland launched the mission to discover where humans came from, and Holloway and Shaw are close to answering the question. Holloway then presents images of archaeological digs across the earth, revealing pictograms of humans worshipping giant creatures pointing to the stars. Holloway notes that the civilizations that made the pictograms were separated by centuries and had no contact with one another, yet they drew the same set of stars. The galactic system matching the stars in the drawings was so distant that the ancient civilizations couldn't have discovered it. However, initial investigations found that the galactic system has a planet similar to Earth, capable of sustaining life. Shaw contends that the pictograms are not maps but an invitation to visit the planet. She refers to the creatures who sent the invitation as engineers because she believes they created humans. Later, David takes Shaw and Holloway to Vicar's quarters to meet with her before they land. As they gape at the amenities in the room, David discloses that it's a separate module from Prometheus that has its own life support and supplies. Shaw notices the med pod in another room, but Vickers tells her not to touch it. When Shaw asks why she needs such a machine, Vickers ignores the question and hints that she's not impressed by their archaeological discovery. Although Vickers doubts they'll find intelligent life forms on the planet, she tells the archaeologists that they won't engage or communicate with aliens if they find them. Shaw asks her why the company bothered to bring the archaeologists if they couldn't make contact, so Vickers divulges that Wayland wanted to include a true believer on the mission. Before landing, the crew sends holographic videos about Earth to the planet, but they don't receive a response. As their ship enters the planet's atmosphere, Ford, the medic, warns them that the air is not breathable. As Captain Yannick navigates through the mountains, Holloway notices pyramid-shaped structures in the valley, so they land near it. As soon as the ship lands, Holloway tells the crew to suit up to investigate the pyramid. Yannick points out that there are only six hours left of daylight, but Holloway insists. Soon, the crew heads to the artificial structure on their buggies and armored truck. Once inside, Fifield, the geologist, releases several orbs to map the interior. When they reach one of the caverns, the crew learns that the air inside is breathable, so Holloway removes his helmet despite despite Shaw's objection. Other crew members follow suit upon seeing Holloway breathing normally. As they explore, David finds a wall with strange symbols and swipes his hand on it as if operating a console. A hologram of humanoids appears along the corridors, frightening the crew. The fading image shows the humanoids running from something. When the crew follows the hologram, they discover a corpse of a humanoid decapitated by a door. Fearing the dangers ahead, Fifield and Milburn decide to return to the Prometheus and leave the others behind. David opens the door that decapitated the humanoid. Inside, they find the engineer's head and a giant monolithic statue of a humanoid head. As they go deeper inside, they discover remarkable murals on the ceiling and numerous vases on the floor. When David inspects a vase, he finds a slimy organic liquid moving on top. When Shaw notices the murals changing shape, she deduces that they must have affected the atmosphere in the room, so she asks Ford to help her bag the humanoid head. As they do, Yannick instructs them to return to the ship because the storm is headed their way. As they prepare to leave, David secretly takes one of the vases. The crew returns to their buggies as the cloud of airborne silica heads in the ship's direction. Sean's buggy makes it into the ship, but she accidentally drops the head outside. When she comes back for it, she's blown away by a blast of wind, so Holloway drives his buggy outside to rescue her. Holloway manages to reach Shaw, but the wind prevents them from heading back. 
David hooks himself on the ship before going outside to retrieve them. The three make it to the Prometheus safely, but the crew soon learns that Fifield and Milburn haven't returned yet. Inside the pyramid, the two are lost while searching for the exit. Yannick contacts them and instructs them to stay inside until the storm passes. Inside the ship's laboratory, Shaw examines the head and learns that it's wearing a helmet. When David removes the helmet, they discover cells growing on its forehead, indicating that it's in a state of change. Ford inserts an electrified needle into the humanoid's ear to stimulate the brain. Shaw and Ford are fascinated by the movement of the cells, but they panic when the humanoid's head starts to react to the changes occurring inside its skull. Ford pulls out the needle, but the head continues to expand, so they quickly put it in a containment cell before it explodes. While alone, David wears a headgear while talking to someone. Afterward, Vickers corners him to ask what the person said, but David refuses to tell. Vickers threatens him into speaking, so David reveals that the person said try harder. Later, Shaw examines the humanoid's DNA and discovers that it's identical to humans. Meanwhile, David takes out vials from the vase that he took from the pyramid. He opens one of the vials and puts a drop of black liquid on his finger. David then approaches Holloway, who's disappointed that they couldn't contact the engineers. David offers him a drink and sympathizes with him. Holloway shares that he hoped to learn why the engineers created them, so David asks why humans created androids like him. Holloway answers that it's because they could, and David wants wonders if it'll be disappointing to hear the same reason why humans were created. Before handing Holloway the liquor, David dips his index finger inside the glass. In the pyramid, Milburn and Fifield discover a pile of humanoid corpses in one of the chambers. As they inspect the bodies, Yannick contacts them to warn them that there's another life form inside, but it's not moving. Soon, the signal disappeared, so Yannick figures that it must have been a glitch. Holloway goes to Shaw's room, expressing his disappointment that he didn't get to speak with the engineers. Shaw assures him that their mission was wasn't a total failure because she now has proof that humans descended from the engineers. Holloway tells Shaw that she can now remove her crucifix because they've learned that there's nothing special about life, since they can create it with just a strand of DNA. Shaw gets upset as she can't create a life because she's infertile. Holloway clarifies that he wasn't talking about children and comforts Shaw by making love to her. When Milburn and Fifield reach the chamber with the vases, they discover a black substance oozing from the openings of the containers. Fifield spots a creature moving in the puddle, so Milburn contacts contacts Prometheus to tell them they found a snake-like creature, but no one is on the bridge to hear him. Fascinated by the creature's appearance, Milburn approaches it, but the hammer peed rapidly wraps itself around his arm and tightens its grip when they try to remove it. Milburn yells at Fifield to cut the hammer peed off when the creature breaks his arm. When Fifield slices the creature, a corrosive liquid sprays onto his helmet and melts the glass. As they panic, the hammer peed enters Milburn's suit, crawls into his mouth, and kills him. Fifield stumbles and falls face down on the toxic puddle, causing his helmet to melt onto his face. The next day, Holloway sees a small worm moving inside his eye. Suddenly, Yannick contacts them to announce that he's taking a few men to the pyramid to find Fifield and Milburn because he lost contact with them. Before leaving, David learns that there's a glitch in the probes, causing it to show a signal of a life form on the map once every hour. So he offers to find the device to fix it. When he gets inside the pyramid, Vickers tells him to uplink his feed to her room. Soon, David finds the probe inside a chamber where he discovers numerous vases similar to the one he took. Upon reaching another chamber, David suddenly cuts off the feed to Vickers' life pod. The crew soon discovers Milburn's body, but Fifield is nowhere in sight. Holloway starts to feel sick, so Shaw checks on him and notices his eye turning red. Shaw demands to return to Prometheus, but the others are busy investigating Milburn's corpse. The hammer peed suddenly jumps out of Milburn's mouth and escapes. The team hurries back to the ship while Shaw tells Vickers to prepare to quarantine Holloway. Elsewhere, David activates a hologram and sees the images of the engineers as they get into their stasis pods. As a humanoid prepares to fly the ship, one of them activates an intergalactic map. David finds Earth among the planets on the map, so he grabs the virtual sphere and stares at it in awe. After releasing the sphere, the hologram shuts down, and David discovers that one of the engineers is still alive. When the crew reaches the Prometheus, Vickers blocks them while holding a torch, refusing to let Holloway back inside. Yannick insists on putting Holloway in the med pod, but Holloway gets up and slowly approaches Vickers. Accepting his fate, Holloway tells Shaw that he loves her before surrendering to Vickers. When he takes a step closer, Vickers lights him up in flames while Shaw screams in despair. Later, Shaw is resting when David quietly tries to take her crucifix. David tells her that he needs to take the cross because it might be contaminated. Considering this, Shaw allows him and instructs him to examine everyone's blood. David then scans Shaw's body and learns that she's three months pregnant. Confused, Shaw notes 
that she and Holloway copulated only 10 hours ago. When David tells her that it's not a traditional fetus, Shaw begs him to remove it, but David refuses. As she feels pain in her abdomen, David injects her with a sedative and tells her that someone will soon come to bring her to the cryo deck. When Ford checks on her hours later, Shaw attacks her and runs to the med pod. She configures it to remove a foreign body on her abdomen surgically. As the creature moves in her womb, the device applies anesthetics to her abdomen. She cries out in pain as the device makes an incision. After opening up her abdomen, a claw pulls a trilobite out of her womb. The trilobite rids as the device patches up Shaw's incision. After the procedure, Shaw hurriedly exits the pod and decontaminates it to kill the creature. On the bridge, Yannick catches a video feed coming from Fifield's helmet just outside the ship, so they open the door to check on him. When the crew members go outside, Fifield, now mutated by the alien substance, attacks and kills several men. A crew member lights him up with a blowtorch, but Fifield continues his rampage. Soon, another crew member runs Fifield over with a truck while Yannick and others light him on fire until he dies. As Shaw wanders around the ship, she stumbles upon the med bay, where she finds David and the medical team reviving Wayland. As David cleans him up, Wayland notes that he only has a few days left, so he hid on the ship until he's sure that he can meet his maker. When Shaw points out that the engineers are dead, David discloses that one is alive. Wayland intends to ask the engineers to save him from his impending death, but Shaw warns him that the engineers aren't what she thought they were. She strongly advises him to abandon his plan and leave the planet but Wayland insists on finding the answers to the questions that have plagued humanity. Soon, Shaw gets suited up to join David and Wayland to meet the engineer. Yannick finds her and tells her that the planet doesn't appear to be the engineer's home. He surmises that they use it to create biological weapons, but the creatures in the vases got out and turned on them. When Shaw reveals that one of the engineers is still alive, Yannick tells her that he'll do everything to prevent any alien from getting back home with them. Before leaving the ship, Vickers warns Wayland that he could die if he goes to the pyramid. Wayland tells Vickers that she should have stayed home, but Vickers argues that she couldn't wait in the boardroom for years as he chases a miracle cure in outer space. Vickers tells her father that a king must eventually end his reign and die because it's a natural order of things. When they get inside the pyramid, Shaw shows Yannick the numerous vases stored in the room. Yannick inspects the map of the pyramid and realizes that the structure is actually a ship. David shares his discovery that the engineers were headed to Earth before monstrous creatures attacked them. They intended to destroy Earth so that they could create a new life form on the planet. After reviving the engineer, Shaw instructs David to ask the humanoid why they wanted to destroy the Earth, but Wayland orders his guard to keep her quiet. David tells the humanoid about Wayland's purpose, but the alien rips his head off. The engineer hits Wayland with the android's head and kills the other crew members as Shaw flees. Wayland dies from the impact. With no one to stop the engineer, he activates the ship to complete their mission. Upon reaching the surface, Shaw tells Yannick to stop the ship, but Vickers demands to return home. Shaw argues that there wouldn't be a home to return to if they don't stop the spacecraft. As the pilots prepare to crash the ship, Yannick tells Vickers that he'll eject her life pod into the surface, where she could survive for two years. Vickers hurries to put on a suit and eject out of the ship. After ejecting Vickers' life pod, Yannick and the pilots propel the Prometheus toward the alien ship. Yannick and his pilots take their hands off the controls, ensuring that they'll crash into the enormous vessel. As the alien ship crashes to the ground, Vickers and Shaw run toward the life pod. Shaw stumbles and almost goes gets crushed, but she rolls over to get out of the ship's way. Vickers continues running, but the ship catches up and crushes her to death. The ship soon collapses and falls on top of Shaw, but the rocks behind her keep it from crushing her. With only two minutes of oxygen remaining, Shaw runs to Vickers' life pod and closes the airlock. As she takes some supplies, Shaw hears someone inside, so she takes an axe and heads to the med bay. When Shaw looks inside, she learns that the trilobite that came out of her womb survived and has grown exponentially. David suddenly contacts her and advises her to leave because the engineer is coming. Before she could leave, the engineer emerges and attacks her, but Shaw opens the med bay to unleash the trilobite. As the trilobite wraps its tentacles on the engineer, Shaw runs. The engineer struggles to break free, but the trilobite unleashes tentacles to grab his face and shoots its ovipositor into its mouth. When Shaw gets outside, David announces that there are more alien spaceships on the planet. He asks Shaw to help him operate one of the ships and leave the planet. When Shaw goes inside the ship to recover David's remains, she immediately asks him for her crucifix. After retrieving it, Shaw stresses that she wants to go to the engineer's home planet to learn why they tried to destroy humans after creating them. Before leaving the planet, Shaw records a message, warning others not to find Prometheus because the crew is already dead. Inside the life pod, an alien creature bursts out of the engineer's chest and immediately searches for anything it can devour. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out.
Thank you for watching.